What's up, guys? We got a good one for you today. Let's roll the intro. All right, so today we are gonna be talking about a vintage lens that almost everybody has heard of, the Nikon 105mm 2.5. It was used to take the famous photo heard around the world, the girl with the green eye. One thing I find super interesting about this lens is that this is the older variant of the Nikon 105 millimeter f2.5. Uh, and recently I discovered that it is a sonar design. Now the sonar design is a design created by Zeiss back in the 1930s. And essentially it's a softer design. It's not too soft, but it definitely has softer qualities. But the bokeh is to die for. If you are a fan of dreamy bokeh, this is the lens for you. Just look at that rear element. It sticks out so, so far back. And this is just a classic uh, telltale sign for Sonar lenses. The, the rear elements just are so, so far protruding. And as a result, you can't really use them on DSLRs because they'll hit the mirror boxes. But on mirrorless, you absolutely can. Normally for videos with y'all, I like to take the adapter off so you guys can see the native lens look. The rear element is extremely close to the very, very back of the lens. So I'm pretty scared of putting it down and scratching up the rear element. It's definitely not something I wanna do with this lens. All right, all right, I know what you guys are saying. David, enough hype, let's see some images. As I've mentioned in the past, I used to take sharpness as, a, as the number one priority, but in my more recent years of photography, I found that, especially as a por primarily portrait photographer, that having a, something like a Sonar where it's not necessarily ultra soft, but soft enough to smooth out the skin tones really is a nice thing to have. It really is flattering on your subject. And then of course, who doesn't love Dreamy Boca? So for a while, this little guy fell by the wayside. I sold my Sony a7, I tried to have a stint with crop sensor and with the crop, this lens is pretty darn long, a little too long. I like to be very interactive with my subjects when I'm doing portrait photography, but with this little guy, right? I got right here, it's more like a big guy with the battery grip, it's a nice, honking Sony a7. Uh, luckily I can start getting more photos with uh, this Nikon. I'm really excited about it. Let's pop it on real quick. Ooh, that's a big boy. It's an absolutely amazing 35 millimeter, by the way. I personally think that this is a pretty good looking lens, especially with a Sony a7 with the battery grip. It really balances out. Cause you know, these, these old vintage lenses, it's a lot of metal. It's a lot of metal and they're very, very heavy. So uh, even on a full frame sensor uh, camera, despite, I, mean, I understand it's mirrorless, but you know, mirrorless full frame camera doesn't do anything for it. It's still heavy. You gotta get that battery grip on there to balance this thing out. It's one of the few downsides of having a lens like this. The compression and the dreamy bokeh together really give it that dreamlike state. I mean, if you look at this photo I took of my sister and her date to the prom, you would not be able to tell that I took that in the middle of a mall. Yes, I took it in the middle of a mall. Um, it's a beautiful mall, but 
people are everywhere. So I was able to really get in there with the compression and the Boca really allowed to give it this dreamlike state. Like they were, you know, in the middle of nowhere and it was just the two of them. It was just absolutely wonderful photo. I was happy that I had the right lens at the right time for it. And this is the lens that I got for me. So you guys may have remembered from my last video, uh, that photo of Brian that I showed you with the absolutely gorgeous flare uh, used really artistically. I, I, I absolutely loved it. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but personally, I love a good lens flare. And this is the lens I got that flare with. So if you are willing to work with the sun, work with lights around you, this 60s lens has very little in terms of coating technology to prevent flaring. So if that is something you're going for, this can definitely make it a lot easier for you uh, to get some really, really stylistic flaring in your photos. It's actually quite a treat to play around with. Um, maybe not something I would do for professional work, but you know, I was just at work taking photos of my friends, you know, while I was off and he really seemed to like it. So I was glad I could, uh, could mess around and get some good results for him. For three years, this has been my primary portrait lens. This has been my only telephoto lens that I have used on Sony systems. And it has served me very well. I, you know, the, the manual focusing, while may not be as heavy as the Minolta that I have and I love and it's my favorite, uh, this is absolutely beautiful. It's still very smooth. It's a little bit lighter. So if you're looking for something like video where you can kind of get a nice quick pull, you know, it's going to be a lot better for that. But consequentially, it's not going to be quite as precise. And that's just something that you got to get used to with this lens. Uh, it still has the clicked apertures. It's all manual. You know the deal at this point with vintage lenses. Overall, Still a great joy to use, uh, just a few little quirks to take note of. So I'm not quite sure when they put this lens into production, but I do know that if you are going to pick up a Sonar Design uh, at 105 2.5, you are going to have to buy one with a serial number starting with a 2. And those went out of production in 1971. They switched back to a conventional design. Uh, it's sharper, but the bokeh is just not quite as dreamy. It doesn't have that dreamlike state. But yeah, I know this one's a little bit shorter, but this lens is just absolutely a treat. There's really not much I have to worry with on this lens. This lens is, you know, good to go. Alrighty guys, that's about it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll try to get some more vintage lenses out as fast as I can. Thanks so much. Bye.